Hi, this is chapter three, matter and energy. In these slides, we're gonna first be discussing different classifications of matter. So before we get to classifying matter, what is matter? Well, matter is the material that makes up all things. It's anything that has mass and occupies space. So anything that you uh, can feel or taste or touch is made up of matter, okay? In chemistry, matter can be classified according to whether it is a pure substance or a mixture. So a pure substance is one that has a fixed or definite composition. So if you have a pure substance, every sample of that pure substance is gonna be exactly the same, no matter what, no matter where you are, no matter how it was prepared, it's always the same. For a mixture, a mixture is when you have different kinds of matter that are mixed together but they can be mixed in different proportions so that they may be different depending on how they were created or the recipe that was followed in a sense. The easiest way to understand this difference is to just look at some examples, right? So a pure substance really falls into also two categories. So matter falls into two categories and then pure substance also can break down into further categories. So there are two types of pure substances. The first is probably the easiest to understand and that is an element. Okay, so an element is really something that you see on the periodic table, which we'll get to later in the course. But uh, for an element, all of the atoms of an element are exactly the same, okay? So things like gold, copper, hydrogen, oxygen, and aluminum, these are all elements. So if you have a sample of an element, in this case, the picture here is showing you a sample of this copper, uh, excuse me, this aluminum can, all of the atoms that make up that can are aluminum atoms. And so that can is made up of a pure substance and the pure substance also is an element, aluminum. A compound on the other hand, may be composed or will be composed of more than one type of elements, right? Two or more different elements. So for example, water is a compound that's composed of hydrogen and oxygen. Most people I think know the formula for water is H2O, right? And what this means is it has two hydrogen atoms and two, and excuse me, one oxygen atom. But they're always in the same proportion, okay? You can't add more hydrogen to this and expect it to still be water. If you change the amount of hydrogen, it becomes something else. So every molecule of water is exactly the same because the elements within it are always in the same fixed proportion. So here we see the tree of how matter can be classified. Right? Matter can be broken down into pure substances or into mixtures, and pure substances can be further broken down into elements or compounds, right? So this is another example of an element. You have copper here. Copper is one of the elements on the periodic table. So if you have a piece of copper, like a penny, for instance, it's going to be made entirely of copper atoms. Every atom in that sample will be exactly the same. For a compound, on the other hand, it will be made up of multiple different elements, but always in the same proportion. Uh, so I said just before that water, for example, is made of hydrogen and oxygen. So if you take two hydrogens and an oxygen, you combine them together, you're gonna get water. But if you take two hydrogens and you combine them with two oxygens, now you don't have water, you have a compound called hydrogen peroxide, okay? And it has very different properties from water. But still, if you have a sample of hydrogen peroxide, you know that every particle that makes it up is an individual molecule of H2O2, okay? So in that sense, it can be considered a pure substance. It's important to remember that the properties of a compound may be totally different from the properties of the elements that make it up, okay? Uh, for instance, table salt is a compound that we all are aware of. We all eat it in every meal, and it's called sodium chloride. Okay, it's made from two, comp two elements, sodium and chlorine. So sodium as an element is a metal. Okay? Uh, a big block of sodium would just look like any other metal. It's malleable, you can shape it, um, but it's shiny, it conducts electricity. And one other interesting thing about sodium metal is that if you put sodium metal into water, it'll explode. Okay? It reacts very vigorously with the water and releases a bunch of energy. Chlorine, the other component of sodium chloride, uh, in its natural elemental state, chlorine is a toxic gas. Okay, you can see here it's, there's some gas trapped in that Erlenmeyer flask, uh, and it's a green gas and it's toxic. It's actually um, considered a chemical weapon under the Geneva Conventions. Okay, 
But if you combine sodium and chlorine together in the right way, they can undergo a chemical reaction and produce what we call sodium chloride, which is table salt, which is not only harmless, but actually essential for uh, most of our metabolic functions. Okay. A mixture, on the other hand, is a type of matter that consists of two or more elements, right? So in that sense, it's like a compound, but they're not connected together. They're not bonded together the way the elements in a compound are. And for that reason, you can mix them in different proportions, okay? So again, with water, you always need two hydrogens for every oxygen. With sodium chloride, you always need one sodium for every one chlorine, okay? But if you have a mixture, say salt water, you can make it in different ways. You can dissolve any amount of salt that you want into a glass of water, and you'll have different proportions of the compounds making it up, okay? The other thing about mixtures is that they can be separated without undergoing a chemical reaction, okay? So in other words, they can be separated by physical methods, physical methods. So physical methods includes things like filtration, which is what you see here, right? This person is filtering some mixture through uh, just a paper filter, the same kind of thing you might filter coffee grounds through when you're making coffee. Um, there are other physical separation techniques like chromatography, where you separate it based on how much it absorbs to uh, paper, or to different uh, substances. Or for something as like salt water, uh, you can simply evaporate off the water, right? You heat up the salt water, you evaporate the water away, and the salt, which doesn't evaporate, gets left behind, right? And so you physically mixed it, uh, physically separated the mixture, rather, uh, just by causing a physical change, causing the water to go from the liquid state to the gas state. So mixtures, like pure substances, can also be broken down into two different kinds, okay? The first kind of mixture is a homogeneous mixture. And a homogeneous mixture is one that has a completely uniform composition. So part of what that means is that you can't really tell apart the different um, the different parts that make up a homogeneous mixture. So salt water, for example, I gave as an example of a mixture. If you looked at a glass of salt water, as long as the salt is well dissolved, you're not really going to be able to pick out or tell that there are particles of salt dissolved in the water. They're spread uniformly throughout, so there's no um, part of the salt water that looks different from the other part. Okay, so that's a homogeneous mixture. Brass is another example that you can see here of a homogeneous mixture, right? So the brass is actually an alloy of two different metals, okay? There's no brass on the periodic table. It is not an element itself. Brass is a mixture of copper, mostly copper, and a small amount of zinc mixed into it, okay? But you can change the recipe for brass by changing how much zinc you mix into the copper. And by changing that, you change the properties of the brass, and you get different parts. But if you look at a brass instrument, it doesn't look like there's different metals making it up. It just looks like one metal uniformly throughout. Okay, so it can fool you into looking like a pure substance, but in reality, it's a mixture. And if you melted the brass down in a certain way, you'd be able to separate out the copper and the zinc. Okay. The other kind of mixture is a heterogeneous mixture. And unlike a homogeneous mixture, you can tell apart the different parts of a heterogeneous mixture. They're clearly visible. Uh, so this is a little bit of a contrived example, but the example they give you down here is copper metal and water. Okay, they basically just took a glass of water and they put some copper pennies in it. So if you look closely, you don't even have to look that closely, but you can see the difference between the copper pennies at the bottom and the water on top. And even the glass that is holding it is another uh, part that could be considered part of that mixture and it's clearly separate from the others. Okay, so this is a heterogeneous mixture where you can clearly tell that it's just things physically mixed together. So here are the full classifications of matter. Okay, matter breaks down into pure substances and mixtures. Pure substances break down into elements and compounds. And mixtures break down into homogeneous and heterogeneous mixtures. One thing I want to say here is that the difference between a homogeneous and a heterogeneous mixture can sometimes be a little bit of a gray area. Um, so, for instance, milk. Today, if we buy uh, you know, a gallon of milk at the store and we bring it home, pour a glass, set it on the counter, it's going to look homogeneous, and uh, even if you let it stay there, it'll stay pretty homogeneous, okay? Um, years ago, decades ago, m milk m used to not be so homogeneous, so 
it would be delivered to your door or whatever, and it would become separated. So the cream would rise to the top, and there'd be milk fat separating from the more uh, water-based parts of it. And so if you left a glass of milk uh, in the old days out, it would separate into different parts, which is characteristic of a heterogeneous mixture. So nowadays, milk goes through a process to make it go from heterogeneous to homogeneous. And the process is called homogenization, right? You may have heard of homogenized milk. Um, but even still, homogenized milk, if you look at it closely enough under a microscope, you would still be able to see the, the difference between the fat globules suspended in the more water-based um, matrix. So it somewhat depends on how closely you look at the mixture about whether you personally think that it's homogeneous or heterogeneous. So there's not always a clear distinction between the two. Um, in this course, uh, any questions that you have about whether this or that is homogeneous or heterogeneous, uh, the questions that you get should be clearly one or the other. We're not trying to trick you here. So identify each of the following as a pure substance or a mixture. Okay, I'm just going to go through these quickly. Pasta and tomato sauce is clearly a mixture. If you mix them together, you can see which parts of the sauce, you can see which parts of the pasta. Aluminum foil. Well, a sheet of pure aluminum foil is all aluminum atoms, so it's a pure substance. It's actually an element. Right? Helium is another element from the periodic table, so assuming you have a sample of pure helium, all of the atoms are going to be helium atoms, and it'll be a pure substance. Okay? Air, on the other hand, is a mixture. Okay? There's no such thing as a, an atom of air or, or a molecule of air. Okay? Air is a mixture of several different types of gases. The air in the room you're in is mostly nitrogen gas, but there's about 20% of the particles which are oxygen gas, which are obviously very important for us to breathe. And then there's also a small percentage of the CO2 and H2O that you exhale uh, and other trace uh, elements like argon gas and things like that. So air is a mixture of different gases. But since you can't actually tell the difference between the parts of the air around you, air is a homogeneous mixture. Okay? This, this slide isn't specifically asking for that, but something else to keep in mind. Uh, and then the last one, water. Remember, I gave water as an example of a pure substance. So this one is a compound, not uh, an element, but it's still a pure substance because the hydrogen and the oxygen are chemically binded, bonded, excuse me, bonded together in a fixed proportion. Okay, here are the answers. So this slide is presenting us with a bunch of mixtures, and it just wants to know whether they're homogeneous or heterogeneous. So a hot fudge sundae, clearly heterogeneous. Right? You can see the difference between the ice cream and the fudge and the cherry on top. It's clear, clear to see with the naked eye. Shampoo would be a homogeneous mixture, right? If you pour some shampoo into your hand, most shampoos are rather uniform. You can't see different parts, right? If you've got some special shampoo with little particles suspended in it or something like that, you would call that heterogeneous, but a simple shampoo is really going to be a homogeneous mixture. Sugar water, also a homogeneous mixture. If you dissolve sugar in water, you're not going to be able to see the particles of sugar floating around as long as it's actually dissolved. It'll be uniform, you won't be able to tell them apart, and so it's a homogeneous mixture. Peach pie, of course, would be a heterogeneous mixture, right? You can tell the difference between the crust and the filling, and even within the filling, you can tell the difference between, you know, the pieces of fruit and the sort of syrup around them, etc. 